welcome to my channel everyone today i am going to explain sadat hasan mantu's cold meat or cold flesh or colder than ice as it is translated the actual title is thanda ghost it is an urdu story and to speak about sadat hasan mantu he was born in 1912 in punjab india and he died in 1955 in lahore pakistan at the age of 42 only and he was uh, not very much interested from his childhood in uh, formal education it is interesting for you to know that he failed in his school leaving examination twice and one of the subjects that he failed in was his mother tongue urdu the very language that he was going to be the foremost writer in so uh the foremost writer of the urdu language failed in urdu and it is an in encouraging as well as a fun fact that formal learning is not always everything also he was a first year uh, college dropout okay so now you are reading his story his writings in third year so you can imagine that even a first year dropout living in the modern age can impact literature so much if you have potential if you have true potential and if you believe in yourself you can do better do not always take formal education as everything okay that is the first thing that i tell when i speak about mantu his life was very turbulent one because he saw that age when india was going to be independent but there was religious turmoil there was uh, segregation among uh, people of different faiths and there was massacres all around so the partition of india impacted him impacted on him very very much it affected him so much that he became an alcoholic and he had to uh, be in a mental asylum for some time for that and he died at a very very early age that is 42 you know a very short life span he had and he contributed so much to urdu literature as well as the literature of the indian subcontinent and he is the foremost short story writer in urdu also without him we cannot imagine partition literature he is so important most of the famous stories that he wrote and uh, most of his writings that are famous are focused on the indian partition also there is another fun fact he was accused of being obscene in his writings he was charged for three times before independence in india and again for three times after independence in pakistan so in a way india and pakistan or before independence after independence situations become well, seem to be very similar at least anyway that's another fun fact and the story that you are going to read was charged for the same reason uh, he was accused of you know obscenity being obscene um this uh, for this story cold meat or thanda ghost now let us talk about the story and let us understand first the plot 
I would suggest you uh, to read the story before you uh, listen to my explanations because that would help you better. If you listen to summaries only, you will never get the feeling, you will never gain anything from literature. So you need to read the actual text first. But anyway, the plot is set in the time of partition, when the riots were uh, on and it is set in an area where there are Sikh people and also there were Hindus and Muslims and the place was in riots. There are two characters in this story. One is uh, Ishwar Singh and the other is Kalwant Kaur. Now, from the very beginning, we see that uh, Ishwar Singh comes and the focus goes on mainly on Kalwant Kaur. That Kalwant Kaur was waiting for Ishwar Singh to come. The name is very ironic here also. Ishwar Singh. Ishwar. That means God. Now, uh, Ishwar Singh comes. Kalwant Singh was waiting for him. Kalwant Singh uh, was, or, well, sorry, Kalwant Singh is the beloved of uh, Ishwar Singh. And Ishwar Singh is a very muscular man. He has a great body as a man. And Kalwant Singh is also a very beautiful, very attractive woman who is in love with this man. Very uh, passionate and physical kind of love it is. And she is waiting eagerly for Ishwar Singh to come to bed. She locks the door and she goes on to bed and uh, starts swinging her legs seductively. Then Manto portrays her figure, which is very, very, uh, you know, uh, sensual. The image is very sensual uh, throughout the, the, the story, almost throughout the story. Uh, it is very sensual in its approach. Okay. Uh, it is quite erotic for most of the time. Kalwant Kaur has a great uh, physical appearance and he is seductively looking at Ishwar Singh and her uh, body language is uh, seductive al although she is not talking too much at the very beginning. Uh, she is not talking too much but her the bodily picture, the picture of the body is uh, depicted by Manto very carefully and it is very, very seductive. The scene is very erotic. Ishwar Singh comes, he uh, takes off a tur uh, his uh, turban and uh, takes off his uh, dagger, everything. He goes on to bed to have a physical relationship with Kalwant Kaur as Kalwant Kaur asks for. Ishwar Singh is not denying that, that invitation directly. Ishwar Singh is also mentally thinking that, yes, I am ready for this relation. I am ready, ready for this event now. But he is a little bit absent-minded. And there the story actually begins. Kalwant Kaur asks, why are you being so absent-minded because Ishwar Singh is taking the foreplay before the intercourse there is a foreplay and he is taking the the foreplay too seriously he is he, he is giving too much time to the foreplay Kalwant Kaur is already you know burning with passion 
he she is uh, telling uh, him to uh, throw the top trump card that means that that is that is a me metaphor that means that now you have done enough of a foreplay now move on to the uh, climax now uh, climactic stage climactic part of the action move on to the last stage that is the intercourse itself but the problem is actually ishwar singh is not being able to make his own body be turned on he is to be specific it is not directly said here but to be understood that he is having a kind of temporary erectile dysfunction to be clear that's why he he is being unable to even after so much of a foreplay he is being unable to go on to the last stage of the action of the sexual event of the sexual performance he 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 is being unable to perform he is these these two people they are very aggressive they are you know from the very beginning kalwant kaur's seductive looks her seductive uh, and flirtatious uh, talks are filled with a bit uh, raw passion a little bit aggressive kind of a passion uh, you know love making have different styles and they are these two people are they are both of them are uh, naturally very aggressive in the in 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 their personality is like that and that's why they love each other but the problem is in this particular event ishwar singh has come from some work kalwant singh was waiting for him and she expects him to be uh, a bit ferocious or a bit uh, you know aggressive fierce with his actions uh, like a bit that is for her the masculine the ideal uh, masculinity but ishwar singh has done the foreplay for a long time but he is not turning on he cannot throw the trump he cannot perform the last act kalwant singh sorry kalwant kaur gets enraged she has been turned on she was almost turned on before ishwar singh came she was almost turned on she was expecting him she was uh, eagerly waiting for him and he came and then the fourth place so she got really turned on but at this moment ishwar singh was unable to satisfy her now that was the big problem for kalwant kaur naturally because physically she was getting dissatisfied number 1 and mentally it struck her that why a man i know for long that he can perform well in bed why a man i know that how he performs is being unable to perform her language becomes dirty and attacking she asks who's that bitch who's that bitch that sucked you dry that is the language that means that she doubts or she is almost sure about that there must be another woman with whom ishwar singh has got attached without her notice and that woman is so attractive or you know in some way so much more uh, seductive than uh, alwant kaur that ishwar singh has got satisfied with that woman so much that he is not being able to be turned on with this woman now alwant kaur she is suspecting 
that there is another woman who has made him so you know the level of expectation for the man became so high that he is not being turned on seeing or having a fo uh, even after having a foreplay with kalwant kaur he is not being able to turn on turned on that's why uh she got very angry and uh, she asks who is that bitch and etc and first of all ishwar singh says nobody nobody that is also very important i will explain why the dagger is important the sensual images throughout the beginning of the uh, uh, beginning and the middle of the story is important and then her questioning and the the answer nobody it was nobody that is also important but after asking a lot kalwant kaur understands that there must be something wrong with the, this man this man is lying and kalwant kaur suddenly takes the dagger which is of ishwar singh which ishwar singh has come with and takes she takes the dagger and she stabs him fatally he is going to die but for the moment he is not dead he is just going to die he is having a lot of pain suffering from a lot of pain but he is talking still and then he explains what happened to him he says that kalwant kaur i love you but the problem is this is the time of riots and i took the opportunity i went to the city that is you know where riot is going and i with this very dagger that you stabbed me i killed a whole family except there was a girl of 1617 a girl who was very beautiful i was going to kill her when i thought that no he uses the exact words like uh, i have kalwant kaur i have the beautiful uh, kalwant kaur for every day but let's uh, this is a different kind of fruit and let's uh, this is a beautiful fruit and let's uh, take the taste of this fruit for today that was the kind of language he uses now this fruit image is also important i will explain why then he tells that he took the girl the girl was according to him unconscious or something he took the girl because he didn't touch the girl before uh, killing the other members of the family the whole family was killed he was actually inte his intention was to loot the family okay to loot the house and he killed all the members of the family he was going to kill the girl but the girl was so beautiful that he thought of raping her violating her physically now he took that girl the girl's uh, unconscious body and went a little bit distance uh, went for a little bit distance and there she uh, there he he uh, kept the body and thought that there is no use of um, doing a foreplay i will just violate her as i like her like to violate or something then he violated her but the problem is after having that intercourse the girl was still not moving and then after you know uh 
trying to wake her up or something like that. He understood the girl was long dead. Her flesh was colder than ice. And from that moment, you know, the story doesn't explain, but you have understood that from that moment, he is, he, he has been shocked. Now, the last line comes, Ishwar Singh has explained this and uh, says that, Jani, give me your hand. Kalwant Kaur gives him her hand. And Kalwant Kaur feels that his hand is also getting colder. That is, that means that, that, that of course, that uh, tells you that Ishwar Singh is nearly uh, near to death or going to die. Although uh, the body doesn't get colder uh, uh, as he lives on, but uh, literally, here it is written that his body is colder than ice, but actually that is the cold meat that uh, Kalwant Kaur feels. So now the explanation. A body takes a little bit of time. You know, after death, after death occurs, body starts to getting cold. But it is translated in this book as uh, the body was, uh, his hand was colder than ice. Actually, colder than ice stage comes after death. Okay. But actually, it was like cold meat. That's why the title was Thanda Ghost. And now the explanation. First of all, why is this story so sensual in its imagery in its description you have to understand that the whole story is dependent on Ishwar Singh's uh, Ishwar Singh being unable to perform the sexual act and then you reveal the fact that why is he being unable because he is traumatized. Why is he traumatized? He is shocked. He is traumatized because of himself. Because what he has done. So, to begin with, you need the kind of passion there is, the kind of seductive uh, image, the attractive body that is in front of Ishwar Singh and Ishwar Singh is being is not being able to perform. That is the point. That is a crucial point. That's why this sensual image is important. Without this uh, sensual imagery, he, I mean Manto, could not have got the reader's attention and could not have made us understand that what opportunity Ishwar Singh had, what kind of uh, availability of uh, passionate sex he had and the importance of his being unable to perform would have been would have not been understood because if you don't say that there was this much of passion then how could you uh, explain to someone that even after this much of passion this man is being unable to perform you have to mention that that much of th that amount of uh, um, sensual uh, the setting you have to you have to explain that and then you can only you can you can uh, uh, make your uh, reader uh, being astonished that i am reading this story and i am uh, feeling uh, the, the the environment but this man he is habituated with this woman. He is not being able to. Why? The curiosity comes. And then you go to the end of the story. And you find the cause. The cause is not explained. Of course. It is literature. You have to go deep into the story. And you have to understand why. I will come to this point. That is the main 
idea of this, the central theme of this story. Okay, I'll come to this point. Next, there is a particular dagger. Ishwar Singh has come with the dagger. He is a Sikh. It is, I mean, uh, Sikhs can have Kripan or something with them. Maybe this is translated as a dagger, but maybe it is a Kripan or something like that. It was with him and it was the uh, dagger with which he killed that whole family. Now he has come with this dagger and this dagger kills him. He is getting killed in the hand of his lover, his beloved, beloved uh, woman. Why? Again another point. Why? Because Kalwant Kaur has got angry. She is an aggressive kind of a woman who wants aggressive uh, sexual relationship, who wants a, a very muscular man. He is physically very, she is physically very strong and she, she wants that strength. So, you know, her psychology is very clear and when she gets angry and the dagger is uh, near at, the, at, at her uh, hand, it is natural that she takes that and she stabs him because she has got enough suspicion that this man is lying to her. She is angry that who is that woman? Again, here comes another thing that he says nobody, it was nobody. Actually, at the end of the story, we understand why this is seriously nobody because no woman or no quote-unquote bitch did suck him dry because actually the girl he was trying to rape or he had raped the dead body of the girl the girl was dead so it was nobody nobody did it to him actually now we come to the central concern actually he did it to himself how now here our concept gets a little bit detail uh, needs to get a bit detailed we need to understand a little bit of uh, partition partition as i as i told uh, in the previous uh, video or videos uh, introductory videos to partition literature i told you that Partition was done in the name of religious differences. And you see, there is a philosophy that believes that man or mankind, I mean man in general, every human being, have an inherent quality of goodness in them they only become bad when the situation becomes bad that is one philosophy also when the modern time the modern world showed us the world war and everything the riots here in this country the 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 um, various you know uh, activities, massacres, uh, people were dying and because of newspapers and everything we got to understood that that there came another philosophy that, that said that no, man is thought of being good at heart, that he is good unless he is made to be bad by the situation, by the circumstances. But actually, no, this is wrong. Man is inherently bad. He just wants to look civilized because there is law and order. And if I do that 
bad act what will the others uh, talk about me and etc that kind of fear but inherently man has human beings have uh, a ferocious heart you see uh, this is uh, portrayed in william um, this is this is a uh, portrayed in uh, a particular text uh, called uh, the lord of the flies by william golding so where he has shown that and it is also psychologically uh, when when uh, you know uh, in a laboratory environment it is also uh, proven to be true that uh, human beings are it is it is there is an inherent quality inside human beings that if i can disturb somebody uh, without getting punished uh, if i can do something you know if i can harm somebody that is an inherent quality inside human beings now there comes a time when i mean about indian partition there comes a time when you are provoked you are given the opportunity wholeheartedly you are given you are told that uh, members of different faiths have so many differences that they have to uh, you know fight for their faith and etc and what happens after that provocation you have got a, a little bit of license first of all stupid people start the uh, the riots that that's their nature because they think that faith is dependent on their being uh, uh, you know aggressive or violent number one then when the when the uh, when the law and order just begins to fail many people they begin to take the opportunity that i can do some crime in this moment i have some desires i can loot i can kill i can you know i can violate a woman or women this kind of idea this kind of devil is always inside man but it comes out now in the name of faith in the name of protecting my faith i am turning into a criminal we human beings just need an excuse you see a tiger or a crocodile doesn't need an excuse to kill another animal it is his desire it is its desire to eat another animal and it kills the, the animal eats it it doesn't require an excuse but we human beings we call ourselves civilized what is this idea of being civilized as i have understood it that being civilized is nothing it is it is to pretend to what to be what you are not actually it is just dressing up of the naked truth that you actually are we actually are we are no no animal on earth is more violent than human beings and human beings call themselves civilized animals think of that here when partition came people violated laws people became violent they killed each other sometimes members sometimes they violated the members of their own community it didn't matter to them actually the community issue is the beginning point community issue is the beginning point it starts violence but once you become violent you just kill and kill and kill you 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 just become a blood sucker a blood thirsty animal 
you don't care for any rule in your life because law and order is not there available so you see there is no referee watching me making a foul why can't i foul why can't i make a foul i will make one foul then two fouls then i will go on if there is no referee man seem to be man seems to be man looks like they are civil uh, he is civilized because there is a neighborhood there is a society that will talk about me there is law there is order there is a long term uh, you know uh, a long term uh, time that i have passed as a, as a as a child and as a teenager when i was taught moral lessons etc that becomes uh, uh, that that makes a bit of conscience in my head these things restrain us from acting in an uncivilized manner but when these walls fall down then i understand that there is no referee there is no one looking at me everyone is crazy and i take the opportunity as everyone is so what i become i become less of a human being at least not a civilized human being anymore ishwar singh has taken the opportunity similarly he wanted to loot he wanted to you know because everyone is everyone was killing everyone he you know just like uh, you know for fun or for something he he became violent he was you know these two people they are very aggressive in their nature as we have found it already he just took the opportunity and he didn't have any need to justify himself because the situation was in favor of him that you can do anything at this time law and order is not there so he killed all the members and he was intending or he did rape he did violate a woman or her body at least there is another point why in such violations why in such violence uh, sorry um, violent periods why always women get uh, humiliated why that is another point and it is because the patriarchal society has always given uh, men the confidence that you can do anything anything means anything because you are the strength you man means strength because man is physically stronger the patriarchal society has given that confidence in man number 1 and number 2 religion divides people we all know that although we don't want to accept the truth because you know so it is the placebo of the masses so naturally religion divides people naturally when in the name of religious faith you have got an excuse to be violent violence means to insult anybody that is in front of you in the most humiliating way now that anybody will win if he is stronger than you if he is not stronger than you then you have a chance so ishwar singh has the dagger the family cannot defend the family they the all all the members of the family get killed because ishwar singh has the dagger the dagger is a symbol i have already told now that dagger and also ishwar singh is a man just like the dagger is stronger 
or the dagger is an instrument that Ishwar Singh has and the family doesn't have. That's why the, the family gets killed. Uh, at the same time, Ishwar Singh is a man bred and brought up in a patriarchal society. All the societies are, you know, this kind of mentality is common all around the globe. Whenever war starts, whenever a riot starts, whenever there is opportunity, always women are humiliated by men. The question is why? Because man thinks that I have power and he has always objectified women just as the image of the fruit the Lucius fruit that I have a Lucius fruit named Kalwant Kaur. I take the taste of that fruit every day, but this is a different taste here. Let's take it. That kind of mentality, commodifying, you know, objectifying women and using women, violating women in a way to prove the sentiment of the other people. Suppose I belong to a community A or a country A. This country is having a war with country B. Country A, whatever it tells, whatever is in its constitution, it doesn't matter. It is patriarchal at its core. Country B is also patriarchal with another kind of a, a face wash uh, being used. Uh, a kind of facade okay every society every country we know that that every man of every country thinks that i am stronger and because i am stronger than woman woman is an object that is uh, that is always under my control it is an object under my control and if Country A goes to war with country B or community A goes into a riot with community B. Men in community A will think like that, that I am going to loot the houses of community B, people of community B. Looting means snatching them of their Snatching them of the property, snatching the properties of those people. If a patriarchal society always, as I have mentioned, objectifies women, then women are always psychologically being thought of as a property. If I violate a woman of the opposite community or, or my opponent or my enemy or the other country, whatever, then I can insult or humiliate that community in the most, you know, um, heinous way. Plus the pleasure of being violent. That is a ferocious activity and that gives a kind of, you know, masculine, uh, that is, you know, a confidence given by patriarchy, a masculine kind of, a ferocious kind of uh, pleasure, sexual pleasure, plus the pleasure of insulting or, you know, showing that I am the dominator here. Now, what, what happens? You see, a particular community's men attacks another community's women, another community's men attacks they they attack the community is women women are always the sufferers they compete i mean the men compete that how many women of our community have got violated and how many women of their community how many women of our country how many women of their country that kind of competition goes and that's how women become not human beings. They become in the eyes of, you know, ferocious people. They become like a territory. 
like it is a territory and how much territory I am taking or how much territory they are taking. See, for this reason, women are violated at every point in every way by men. And after that, they have the excuse that I am doing it for my faith. I am doing it to protect my, uh, you know, religion and my rights, etc, etc, etc. I am being violent because my situation has made me so, etc. No, the violence, the, the, the affinity towards violence is inside your heart. You just need an, needed an excuse. Or if you say that I am such a believer, then you are just being stupid. That you are being moved by provocative speeches and you are participating in or beginning a riot. Then you are being stupid. Nothing else. And if you look at stupid people doing stupid things and you... Uh, you, you, you take it as if the situation is uh, so gross that it makes me uh, to be violent towards the people who are weaker than me, who are vulnerable, who do not have a dagger to defend uh, themselves, but I have a dagger, let's kill them. That kind of mentality, you see, is here. But... Why is he traumatized? That is our concern here at the very last uh, point of this story. He is, he decided that I am going to be violent. I am going to loot, loot. I am uh, going to kill. He killed. And he killed five or six people and uh, he was feeling no remorse about that because inside his head he was actually that much violent then he dreamed of violating this woman fine he dreamed of that he violated but when he found out an unexpected twist in the plot that he has violated a dead body. There is, as I have told you, there is a kind of, a, a little bit of human, uh, civilized, uh, or, uh, you know, being civilized, there is a kind of, uh, a bit morality is left, because you are, taught since childhood that you should do this, you shouldn't do that, etc, etc. And you think of yourself that, yes, I desire this, I desire that, but the society doesn't accept, I can't do it. Now the riots are there, so I can do it. You accept, you have an image of yourself that I can do this much of crime. But when the crime turns out to be beyond your expectations, and you see, I was turned on by a dead body. I didn't expect that. I had an, 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 an a physical relationship with a dead body. I didn't dream of that. What kind of a man I have descended to? Who am I? That kind of question comes to your head. Even after killing, even after looting, even after dreaming of raping a woman, he was not thinking of all these things. The moral compunction did not, you know, act. But when the unexpected twist came to his life, it was an invisible mirror. He was looking at himself that what kind of a man I have turned out to be. I didn't expect me to be like this. I did that and there is a bit of faith, a bit of, uh, you know, moral compunction, a bit of sense as a human that even if 
somebody thinks of committing a crime they have a they have some kind of a limit some kind of a boundary that i can go there up to this mark that is my dream yes i can i can possibly go to that step but when you suddenly find out that you have gone five steps more that you never intended or dreamt of and it is about crime it is not about achievement you become shocked by your own image so here what happens is that we often know that the people who get uh, who get violated become traumatized because the act of violence works in that way that i am violated i am insulted and in this world i feel that i feel terrible i am traumatized that is very natural equation we understand that but here manto uses a twist the body was a dead body it cannot have the trauma but it surprised by being dead it surprised isha singh so much that Ishwar Singh became traumatized looking at his own image that i am like this i can be a killer i can be a rapist but i am a necrophiliac that is beyond his imagination that is too much that he can he can take that's why the perpetrator becomes traumatized the criminal becomes traumatized of his own crime he is so traumatized that he cannot perform sexually he is having an erectile dysfunction for the moment because he is shocked at himself what he has committed what he has done and by this way manto shows that even if the riots are going even if everybody is killing everybody i still believe that there is inside your heart a portion of your heart that will one day show to you that what you are and you will be traumatized by your own by looking at your own memories of your activities that you are doing today the dagger that you are using today will come back to you and kill you metaphorically if not literally okay so and the name is ishwar singh here that is also ironic that in the name of faith people engage in riots they do not think that if something makes me that much violent if some idea makes me so violent it is better to leave that idea alone let that idea be as it is i am not indulging in that idea i am not going to be inhuman that is not the option for people people take it as if that yes faith has called me i have to protect faith i am the protector of faith let's be violent number 1 and then in the name of faith they turn towards violence and then the violence gets him that more become more violent why not nobody is watching you they enjoy it they in, indulge in it because man is a ferocious animal the most ferocious animal living on earth naturally manto is still showing us that yes you can be as violent as you are now as you people are but your own actions may one day kill you may traumatize you and there is the faith that when kalwant kaur stabs 
you know ishwar singh ishwar singh doesn't get angry or anything or doesn't protest he accepts because he has lost faith in himself he has no no interest in living he is not living or dying he is in a state of you know uh, indifference he is shocked he is traumatized so naturally he is in a state of indifference and he is not responding uh, he is not retaliating to that attack that also surprises kalwant kaur and he explains why he explains the story and then tells that the dagger you stabbed me with i used that dagger to kill the whole family so in a way he explains it to himself and to kalwant and to us that the that the dagger that i used against other people has come back to me and this is manto's cold meat thanda ghost where manto has presented that man can be violent they can have you know some people have aggressive sexual activities it is an understanding between them both of them like that and they can have that that is no point here but two people who are of that kind among them one man is not being able why because being attracted to that aggressiveness he has committed a crime of a level that he never imagined and that he cannot imagine even now that he has committed that and it has traumatized him it has in a way metaphorically paralyzed his abilities it has paralyzed him his abilities he has become uh, he he has become incapacitated by his own activity as a result of his own activity as a result of the trauma that he has got by looking at his own image okay and there manto teaches us that the violence somehow you th- you may think that the vi- if i become violent the trauma and the, every insult every humiliation the trauma will affect the people who are violated but no human brain may work in different ways and if you keep violating at a point there is a certain point you will cross the limit and you will be horrified looking at your own image that is the central idea of this essay sorry this uh, short story so if this video has helped you like share and subscribe and if you have questions if you have uh, any um, request that uh, to make any uh, other video on any other topic write in the comment section that's it for today thank you